Okay, that seems to be live. This Veterans History Project interview is being conducted on Wednesday, June the 2nd in the year 2010 here at the Niles Public Library. Uh, my name is Neil O'Shea and I'm a member of the reference staff here at the library and I'm privileged to be speaking with Mr. Robert Barsky. Uh, Mr. Barsky was born in Chicago on January the 21st, 1921 and he now lives in Niles. Um, Mr. Barsky, Barsky served in the Navy uh, aboard the USS uh, Foot, and uh, we appreciate his coming in for the interview today and also for uh, for sharing some cl clippings and descriptive material uh, about that proud vessel and, uh, and also uh, some details of his shipmates, and we hope to add these uh, in the uh, appendix uh, to the transcript, uh, which should make for an interesting interview and an insight into uh, naval operations, particularly in the Pacific and Okinawa uh, in the Philippines. So, so Mr. Barsky, how did you, uh, what were you doing when the war broke out? Or, uh, well, I, was, I wasn't in then, you know, yeah. as well as Pearl Harbor was hit. Well, then uh, later on, what I roughly marked down just about when I decided to join the Navy, and uh, I enjoyed being in the Navy. Yeah. Were you were you in high school when the war broke out? No, no. No, I was uh, just working as a tool and die maker at, at a company, you know. In Chicago? Right. Where did you live in any particular neighborhood in Chicago? Uh, uh, yes, it's uh, on there, uh, the little one, the little ticket, I guess. It's a little ticket. Yeah. At 3406 30, Waveland. Oh, yeah. And then I moved to Niles. Yeah. That was after the war. That's right, yes. Yeah. So, um, so you entered the um, service then in 19... 43. Summer about that, yeah, 1943, the end of 43, and then stayed in until the war was over. So were you, did you enlist then, or they called your number? Or I, No, I went down and enlisted, and <clears throat> right away the Marine was standing there, and he patted me on the back, and he said, you'd make a good Marine. And I says, well, I'd like to be in the Navy. So he says, you're... So he let me go in the Navy then. Well, so you weren't afraid of water? Could you swim or? No, I really didn't think about that. I just figured it'd be better to be in the Navy, you know. And now when I see all the different things that happen with the Marines and in the uh, the way they have to crawl through the mud and what they go through, the Navy is pretty good. Of course, you could get killed there too. Oh, yeah. Wounded, you know, or I, we were just lucky. So what did your what did your family think of you going into the to the service? Or? Oh, that was okay with them. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah, my mother and father. Yeah. In fact, and after the war was over, they drove out to New York, and I had them aboard my ship. <laughs> so did you attend high school at all in Chicago? Or oh yeah, four years, the regular high school. What school did you attend? Lane Tech High School. Oh, Lane Tech Indian. Four right years. There. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Western and. Uh, and Addison. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I went, that was a good school. I enjoyed work uh, going to some Lane Tech. Yeah. Um, so you chose the Navy, and then for your, um, that you, did you have any brothers or sisters that were affected by the war, or? No, I had a, a brother that was born, and then didn't, and he, and he died later on. Something yeah. happened to him. Yeah. So for, so for your, um, is it basic training? Did you go to was Great Lakes? Great Lakes, the regular training, yes. Mm -hmm. And, and then, uh, in, in high school, I was even in the ROTC, Reserve Officer Training Corps. Training Corps, right. And in, in the Navy, they even let me march the men around because I had a little training From in our, school. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> so... Um, 
So what? So after the, so did you have any trouble adjusting to being in military life? Didn't seem to have any, you know. No, I was young. <laughs> yeah, young. Right. Yeah. No, it seemed to be okay. Everything went along fine. And then you're, a lot of guy, a lot of the men there. It's the first time they're away from home for any length of time, and they're meeting all kinds of different people from all over the country. And uh, that's right. But they all seem to say we got along. We got yeah, along. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. There were. I think it Mark was on there somewhere. Three hundred. Which she was at on 300 men, I guess, aboard our ship. And you never had any problems, or no? Everybody got along. That's right. Yeah. So when I got along with everybody. I don't know. There were some fellows that, you know, was, I was in the engine room, and yeah, the machine. And then when I went in, when we went into action, I was in a five-inch gun, and uh, well, they had me. Doing everything, setting depth charges. There was a movie on the other night about uh, enemy below. Yes, did, did it's you a see fine that? Movie, yeah. And the yeah. man uh, was oh, setting yeah. the depth charges. That's what I had to do for a while. That was, and then he got hurt. He cut his hand up or took his fingers off. I thought of that when I when I was doing that, where you know they release it from the bridge. You know, you set them, but they release it. So the timing that's has to be in sync, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. And that's to hit a submarine or something, that's right? That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah we t we're pretty sure we sunk, well, we got credit for one submarine. Yeah. So, um... And some islands, Philippine islands. Yeah. So you, um, when did you join up, when did you, uh, become part of the crew of the USS Foot? Well, that's that's a hard thing to remember exactly. But I went into Great Lakes, and then they sent me to San Diego to catch my ship. Ah, was and then I was yeah. aboard. Then we used to take men out to sea, past Treasure Island. We used to take men out to sea for a couple of days or a day and a half, and bring them back in. A training for some of the men, and then all of a sudden we went overseas. And we ended up at Okinawa when the kamikazes were yeah. coming in. And I was glad that was over with. Yeah, the Navy sustained a lot of uh, casualties and yeah, damage in were, Okinawa. 20% of the casualties, I think, were... Right. right yeah. yeah, they were crashing right next to us. We were lucky we didn't get hit. You know, they'd just come right into you. Yeah. But we were firing five-inch guns, and a lot of men were on the 40 millimeters and the 20 millimeters. They trained you just about everything. In case somebody got killed, you could take over, you know. Oh, that's a good principle. Yeah. 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 So, do you remember when you got your first promotion, or...? Oh, well, when I went in, they gave me fireman first class right away. And then, uh, it's, and then I took the test for it. There were so many men. <laughs> Uh, in the Navy with rates, it was hard to get your rate right away. So at the very end, when I passed the test, and then that was the end when I then I left the Navy and re yeah. retired. The um, were you ever frightened at any time? I mean, oh, I imagine so. But uh, well, I believe in God, and uh, it helps. <laughs> some of the fellows didn't believe in anything, but. They were there. At times, we were kneeling down, even yeah. you know, when we had when we weren't fighting. Yeah. But about the Navy, at least when each each uh, uh, fight, the different fighting was over, then you'd be able to clean up, you know, which you're in the Marines or the Army. They had it pretty rough. Yeah. Did you like the, the the captain of the foot when you served? Do you? I wonder. We had four different, four different captains. Know, it's hard to remember. Were they all good? Were they all, all good, admirable? Pretty good. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> we used to show movies on the fan tail. If you're interested in that, oh yeah, we had to have a screen on the fan tail when we weren't in the war and we'd watch movies. And uh, the captain would say, go ahead with the movies. I won't be down right away. 
And most of them were pretty good, but one made us wait for him before we'd start the movie. <laughs> the last captain we had was pretty good. Pretty good. And, uh, and I we used to protect the Missouri in the beginning. Wow. The Missouri battle That's, wagon. Yeah. Just in case a torpedo come in, we were supposed to take it. Was that around Okinawa then? Or no, yeah, that, that was, was no, that, that would be say or maybe around the Philippine Islands or all of some islands, other islands. Yeah. Did you get to go ashore in the Philippines ever? I think we did get a, a liberty to go ashore. Uh, I'm not sure if it was the Philippines. Different islands we did go off. Yeah. We had a beer parties, different things, but not very many. Do they have some kind of a ceremony when you cross the equator or anything? Oh, yeah. They, I got beat up so bad that I couldn't sit down for a week. Did they pedal you behind or something? Or? Oh, yeah. They they would take <clears throat> rice and put it in a sack and wet it, and then after it was dry, they'd beat you over with that sack of the rice in there and beat you and take all your hair off, just a little in the middle, and put grease on it. Well... To me, I thought that was, it was rough, but it wasn't as bad as a war, though. You know, I yeah. told the guys, if you think this is bad, wait till we get into war. They said, were you in the war? It's not yet, but I figured this is, they took your hair off. You had to walk, get into a pit full of garbage. You had to crawl in the pit of garbage. And uh, you had to wear your clothes backwards, so... And, and then they would hit you, and you'd feel it more. And then they'd put the hose on you and cool you off, you know. You were, an, you were a scurvy pollywog until you went over the equator. Then you were a shellback. And I got a lot of literature and a big uh, framed picture of all this, too, you know. Yeah, that was interesting. Then we get some more people, guys aboard the ship, and we were supposed to beat them up too, but I never even bothered going out beating anybody up. But uh, uh, but you felt it. Yeah. yeah. And my best friends were beating me up. My best, real buddy, close buddies. <laughs> and then about three days before you went over, they were throwing fish in your sack. You had to get used to it, that's all. That was, I imagine the Marines and the Army had worse things than that, I don't know. Yeah, some traditions and... Yeah, of putting pins on you, sticking it in your chest, I remember on TV. But, but um, the, um, so the, there were a lot of ships at Okinawa. Huge fleet, oh, I think. Yeah, I guess. Well, I didn't. We didn't really see many ships. A lot of them were hit, and there was. A, we were always alone, you know. But I imagine if you get hit and something happens, they come and pick up the guys that are. If if you didn't drown, if sharks would get you anyway, I would say. But, yeah. Uh, I never thought about that. Yeah. Um, there was never any doubt in your mind that, your, that the United States was going to win the war against Japan, was there? No, I figured we were going to win the war, Oreo. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I suppose, that the, what was the reaction when, they, uh, when you heard that they had dropped the atomic bomb? Oh, well, then I, I didn't know what to think then. It's just that the war was over then, you know, and then we were headed for home. And uh, first we went to South Carolina and decommissioned the ship, which our ship at Destroyer was called a tin can. You, you, mm -hmm. know, you know that, you yes. heard of that. Yeah. And uh, then we put parts of it in the Nimitz Museum. Oh, that's what you mentioned down that's, in Fredericksburg, yeah, Texas, right, yeah. yeah. The Museum and of like the Pacific. I say, I, uh, I wasn't married when I went in. After I was just going with a girlfriend, and then after the war was over, then when we got out, then my wife and I got married. But when I went in, she joined the waves, and my son was in the way uh, in the navy. 
So did you did you had you met your wife in high school during high school or while you were working? No, while I was working at a Mills Novelty Company where they made the slot machines and things, and I was a tool and die maker. And I met her. She was a, a the girl that delivered the mail, and all the guys would say, "There's a girl for you, Bob." And I ended up going out with her. And like I say, after the war, I married her. Yeah. So she saw you. Did she ever see you in uniform? She did. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Well, well, Great Lakes. Yeah. And then she went into the the waves at the same time as no left, shortly after. Or? Shortly after, yeah. Oh yeah. And I had to have a special uniform made up, you know, more bell bottom to look right. But I hardly used it. Just around San Diego for a while, and then we went overseas right away. Yeah. So your wife, you, you and your wife got married after the war. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you might have married her anyway. Uh, like the war wasn't, because um, you oh, met her before and Oh, yeah, we were on well. on getting married. Yeah. In fact, we were going to get married. They wanted tool and die makers in, uh, in this here... Uh, or the what would you call it in the i in the in the islands they wanted tool and die makers but we didn't I didn't go into it. Yeah, the um, had you taken uh, Hawaiian islands? Hawaii. Wanted tool and die makers yeah. out there, and I figured well, we wouldn't have to go to the war or do anything. But I joined the navy, and my wife, which she wasn't my wife, just joined the waves. So you're saying you they you would have gotten an exemption. To, to work in if the I industry went, so, in Hawaii. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hawaii, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you were at, at Lane Tech, had you taken classes in shop? In the, right. The, I took a technical course, right. Yeah. So that kind of helped, sort of well, helped a little bit. I would say so, yes. And then, and then your background is a tool and die maker. Right, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. My father was a tool and die maker. Uh, I imagine I would have went to college. Instead, I went into tool and die, and I really enjoyed it. I miss it today, and I'm t I'm retired 25 years now. Wow, yeah. At 62, I retired. Yeah, the um. So it must have been nice. To, you probably docked in Hawaii, did you, when you were aboard the foot? Oh or, yeah. 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 Oh well, sure. Yeah, we were in Hawaii. For, Pretty nice, huh? Yeah, but then after the war was over, I took my wife there. You know, you probably went there, didn't you? I've you? been there once, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the you know, so you enlisted then. So you were in until 1946. Came out at uh, at the end of the war. That's and when the war. They let ended. you out. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then, um, did you ever think of making a career of the Navy or? Not really, but uh, it would have been. A, it, I'd say a lot of these fellows that didn't have a job or they had hard learning different things, it would have been good to stay in the Navy. Yeah. No, I never thought of staying in the Navy. Now, you mentioned that your wife, Mrs. Barsky, she was a WAVE. She joined the WAVES when I was... Yeah, that's a, that's a Navy... Is that a Navy uh, well, same auxiliary? As, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. the same as... Uh, let's see, this book right here, they showed a girl, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, right right exactly, yeah. 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 And I, I think you mentioned that um, Mrs. Barsky might be willing to be interviewed for the for the project. She's, That'd be she, great. I asked her, "Would yeah. you be interviewed if uh, Mr. O'Shea called you on that?" She's, "Oh, sure." Yeah, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And my son, like I say, he joined the Navy too. So. But uh, he got a brain tumor and died at 48. Isn't that something? And he was everything was going good, but today uh, you wouldn't think. Uh, these young people dying at young age like that, you know, and here I'm around yet. Yeah. Had your dad any experience in World War One, or? No, he was never in the war. He was never in the war. No, yeah. he was, uh, I just wouldn't take him for some reason. Yeah. And then, uh, were you were you proud that your son went went into the navy then, or happy about that decision? Yeah, or? but he was, he wanted to get on a carrier or something, I said, and he was at, uh, Right at a, a golf course in Niles, uh, it was uh, well not the, at the golf course. It was uh, 
I guess it was uh, on Lake Michigan. They had a, a, a ship were uh, for carriers, like a carrier, but it wasn't a regular carrier. And he was, he'd bring the planes in. He was with the planes, and he wanted to get on a ship. I said, stay right where you are, you know. Yeah. Yeah, they, I think during the war, they used to have some kind of the Wolverine or something, some uh, carrier plane, yeah. carrier out there in the Lake Michigan, and they yeah. pra practiced landing. And I don't know if he was there or was just at Great Lakes, I guess, you know, yeah. with the... Uh, so the, did you have so um, when the war ended? Did you have any trouble adjusting to civilian life or anything Not like that? Didn't seem to no. Because the job that you had, you were able to go back to. I was right in. The, I went right back into the same shop. Yes, I would had I left. Terrific. That was pretty good. They, yeah. There were said come right in. Just come yeah, back. Yeah, so you got your job back, and then you, you right. Know, you're Mrs. Barsky, and so. Then she later on she that took nerve. I don't know how she to for her to go in. You know, a woman like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so did you ever think of using the GI Bill or anything like that, or no, no, no. Yeah, and then um, your family must have been happy to get you home. They must have been oh, excited yeah. to come home. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. Did you? Um, oh, you mentioned that your the foot was decommissioned on the East Coast, and then your your parents came out to see you in New York right. when they came out? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then did you all drive back together or take a train or something? No. Uh, no, I came back on the train. No, they just drove out. They drove out. Yeah. To see me and walk. I took them aboard the ship. And then uh, I came in on the train. And... Um, you made a lot of good friends, it seemed. Um, oh, yeah. I used to go to these reunions. Every year they'd have a reunion uh, in a different state. Like at one time they had it in Disney World twice. And we would drive out there with all these, get together with all these people, you know. And we'd stay at a certain hotel for about four days. But lately I stopped. I went to about 11 of them, and then I, we stopped. I really don't care to drive it too far now. Yeah. Of course, we, I have a daughter living in Washington or on Oregon, and we fly out there. Or t we took a train out there, too, you know. Yeah. And now she's coming in to see us now in a couple of weeks. Uh, um, any of the your pals... Good buddies from the ship. Are they still? Do you still stay in touch with them? Or? Oh yeah. But now and then I call them. Yeah, and they call me. Not lately. It's, it seems and a lot of them die are dying. You know. Yeah. And I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, that's terrific. Um, you know, if it's my time, it's all right with me. You know. Yeah. I'd like to be here to take care of my wife. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you think you're? Uh, Wartime experiences affected your life. That's a question we always oh. ask the vets. How do you think your experiences in the war affected your uh, life? I don't really think it hurt my oh, life like some of these people that were in the uh, guys that were in the Marines and different things. You know, we saw pilots run out of fuel landing in the water next to us, and we'd pick them up. We go out the minute, go out in a whale boat. And we have two boats on the a whale boat and a gig, one on each side of the ship hanging there. You can even see them on the ship. And we'd go out and pick these guys up. And you'd see the legs, everything hanging out where the sharks got them already, you know. But we brought them aboard. Some were okay and some were dead. But, uh, well, with the war going on, you, you know, it isn't like you'd see men in the uh, Marines, like when they're in the trench, I think it bothered those people. Yeah. It seems to be bothering these. They should let these men come home now before they lose all of them, lose their legs. This doesn't seem like a war to me. Yeah. The, the pilots that you would take out of the water, they had parachuted from their planes, or the plane just crashed in the water uh, or they were some shot down. pilots out they could see they were running out of fuel, fuel so they'd 
come down the parachute and we'd shoot over and pick them up. Yeah. Now and then, whatever, the, yeah. how many there were. Yeah. Do you think you learned any lessons about life from being in the military? I would say so. I think so. Uh, what happened is uh, on our ship, my ship was hit by a torpedo. I wasn't on it then. It was hit by a torpedo and it was towed in to California and that's when I caught it. They were, what did they towed it in? They had to pull all the dead men out of there and everything and uh, they rebuilt the back of the ship, the stern. And uh, I was lucky I wasn't on the first cruise, but the guys were telling me that the second cruise was worse than the first cruise even though they got hit. Twenty guys were killed that were close to the stern, you know. But I wasn't on it then. Then I got on it after that. And then they claimed it was worse the second time, because I don't know. Yeah. When you were uh, tending to the machinery down below deck, yeah. it must have been hot down there, wasn't it? Oh, it was so hot down there. In fact, it was hot in the South Pacific. I used to try to sleep on a toolbox top side on the second deck. When the water was pretty smooth that you wouldn't roll off and go in the water and get drowned, you know. If the water was pretty pretty smooth, I'd sleep out there because it was so hot down, but not just the engine room. Anyway. The sleeping quarters was pretty hot, yeah. But that was better than the winter. In cold weather, right? Being in cold weather, I guess. Oh yeah. The uh, and the Navy has good food. Somebody said. Very good, right? Except when they'd have uh, greasy pork chops to eat or something, I wouldn't eat because I didn't. I never got sick on the ship. You know, seasick. I born never, sailor, huh? Pardon? A born sailor. I don't know. Well, I didn't get sick, but you know, I wouldn't eat something greasy, I'd wait for the cake. <laughs> and I'd eat some cake because then that water got pretty rough. They used to have our coffee pot hanging on a rope, you know, and then oh. all of a sudden when it got really rough, the table collapsed. We used to eat at a long table, like twice as long as this. That was pretty nice to sit at a table, wasn't yeah. it? That's why it's on a tin can. We were the, the larger two engine rooms and two fire rooms. It was the big destroyer. Yeah. They had different sizes, you know, and we were the, the large one. And most of the most of the time, the ship's engines worked okay. They were. Oh yeah. Good, yes. good machinery, and you wouldn't think so after it was hit once, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Then they took it out again, and these guys that were on it that didn't get killed, they went out again with me. Yeah. We went out. They should have left them stay home, stay back. You'd think they earned their credits or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So did you uh, did you think of any bad habits or drink a lot of beer or smoke a lot of cigarettes? No, not or really. Gamble no. or anything? No. No. Not really. Uh, I drank beer when I got home. And cigarettes. I did a lot of cigarettes smoking, which yeah. I quit years ago. Yeah. And when I learned, they're really bad for you. But I smoked for quite a bit of a while, you know, when I came home. Yeah. And um, we're approaching the end of the interview. Is there any um, any uh, time that you can remember that was something extraordinary or something very funny or humorous that you still chuckle about oh. today? Or I remember the time that so and so. But oh. although you mentioned getting paddled on the behind with the with the rice. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, uh, Going over the equator, yeah. Yeah. Well, everybody seemed to take it all right. You know, yeah. you had to. What else are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> but it just seemed my friends would were after me harder than than the other guys, you know. Yeah. But they, they meant good. Yeah. Did you get any news from home while you were... Uh, oh, yeah. My... my uh, girlfriend used to write me letters. I used to look forward to that all the time. And you get them like whenever you docked or something or? Well, we really never docked it. Another ship 
would come aboard, uh, come uh, alongside, not too cl you know, and then they'd string it, bring it across on a cable or something. Cable, or right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We got the mail pretty good. Yeah. And everybody looked forward to that. That's what kept you going, right? Yeah. And like I say, which in the beginning, when there wasn't too much action, they used to we used to watch movies on the fan tail, but that didn't last long because we went over to Philippine Islands, Okinawa, and Mindoro, and all the different islands that we bombed, you know. Yeah. So did you ever, you ever did you ever dock in Japan, or? or? No, no. We hit, hit, we hit Japan and different islands, you know. Yeah. We went in so close that I could see them on motorcycles going along the beach. Wow. That's pretty good that the, you know, the destroyer yeah. could go in that close. Yeah. But we made it back and we're lucky. Yeah. And uh, I, I would say, I look back at it and I'd say the Navy was pretty good though that I, we made it back. Yeah. Well, Mr. Barsky, I want to thank you for uh, for coming in and sharing your uh, wartime experiences, uh, I feel like I, uh, well, I learned you quite very, a bit. Thank you very yeah. much. I know you're a busy man. Yeah, but uh, thank God men like you were busy during, and women were busy, <laughs> busy oh. during the war. Oh. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, but I thought I'd just bring those other ones no, in. No, this is for, terrific. Uh, yeah. And if you're, if you're wanting my wife, I know she'd be interested, you know, to come oh, yeah. any time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have one other um, couple who've interviewed, so you'd right. be the second one. Oh yeah. It's Bill Bill Ship, he was in the army uh, in Europe, and then she, and then Martha was in the. Um, she's the one that was the cadet nurse. Yeah. Oh. She was from Michigan, so. One of the men that was on the stage was up here. This is where you had that when I sat where I was yes, here that day. Yeah. What was his name again? Charlie. I can't think of his last name now. Charlie Motts? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know Charlie quite a bit, you know. Yeah, he's he's about 91 now, I think. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's a kind of a, he's colorful. Yeah. He's, oh, he's, yeah, he's a nice guy. Oh. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, he, he came in on, uh, he was in the library last Saturday. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and that was his birthday. You know, that was his birthday oh, the day of Okinawa. Oh, yeah, so that's he served right, the yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lately, he said he didn't feel that good, so oh. I was telling him, well, don't worry about it. You'll be okay. I don't know. Maybe it's the heat or something. I don't know. Could be. Yeah, I don't feel the same when uh, in this heat either, you know. No, the weather really affects us. But, uh, yeah. Well, okay. If, as I say, um, if there's anything you want to add to the interview, we can do that. If there's anything, uh, okay. anything that comes to mind. You didn't want those big pictures, did you? I don't care. You can throw them away or do. Oh, I'm not going to throw them away. No, I'll probably oh. use them. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can have them. I just thought I'd bring them in to show you that no, my that's wife great. was in there too. Yeah, handsome couple. <laughs> oh yeah. So you were married then in 1948, or? She went. Well, let's see, when were we married? That's pretty good that I can't remember the when we were married. Yeah. Well, we're married 54 years. Wow. 54 years. And my wife is just 85. Yeah. Yeah, we have a book with all the pictures of all the men, you know, or yeah. most of them anyway, but five, six pages of them, every page. And this they send to you every month. Or, yeah, at least once a month. It's another, it's a little booklet, like. Yeah. So, um, let's see. So you were married in the 1950s, perhaps, were you? Yeah, I get you. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you, did you, um, after the war, you went back to the same company, right? And then did your wife also go back to the same mail? Um, I'm not sure if she did or not. Yeah. If she went back to the, I guess she did go back, sure, because that's when I I, I actually got to 
back together with her again. Yeah. And then you didn't have any trouble getting an apartment or a house after the war when you got married or anything? Uh, well, my when we got married, my uh, we lived with my her mother. They had a two flat. Not a no, it wasn't a two flat. They had a a room upstairs in their home, and we stayed there and lived there for I don't know about a year or so. And then we found an apartment, right? Yeah, I've heard some of the vets say it could be tough to get uh, get apartments get a, and housing after yeah. the war. I bought a home in Niles. This, I'm in my second one now. The first one was where the nursing home is. Out the Bethany? Niles. and Yeah. yeah. I a, down one of the streets right there, I had a home. Yeah. In fact, I lately I looked at it, and it's gone. There's a brick house there, a great big two-story house. Yeah, it's gone. Well, that was a brick house, too, but it was, yeah. this was a, whoever... I sold it to, they sold it to somebody else, and a lot of big, a lot of homes being built larger now, did you notice? Yeah. Nice, yeah. Big, fancy homes. Yeah. But, uh... So do you, do you like, have you gone on any cruises since, have you been back on the, on the water since? Oh, then? yeah, well, we went on a cruise. And of course, my wife would like to keep going on cruises, but I, I, I kid her. I said I had enough in the Pacific, you know. Yeah. But there's a big difference, you know. But it seems that's all you do is eat on those cruises. Have you been going? No, I've never been on a cruise. Well, you're not missing anything. <laughs> it's okay if the people that like them, it's all right. But uh, it's, 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 it's nice. They're it's very, they're very popular, and I think the food is del is oh, delicious. Oh yeah, well the food is great. Yeah. Yeah. Just like the Navy, good food. This is a really interesting hat you wore today. What's that? Oh, oh it's got all these. Uh, that's not the one I wore the whole time in the uh, when I board ship. No. Yeah. I had another one. And my campaign bars, those are the ones that are on there. My campaign bars are real ones, you know. I got them at home. Yeah. Which four stars for battles. I have battle stars. Some of the guys tell me I should put them on here, but. I don't bother with that, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's the USS Foot Reunion pin. Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah, San we, Diego, I, 1997. Yeah, I've... Quite a few of them. And then you got a... What does that one say? Let's see. This is Charleston, South Carolina, 1992. Yeah. Then, uh, oh, no, these are... No, it's just these. Yeah. I got all kinds of them at home. Every time we went to a, met all the guys, they had pins, you know. Reunion, see, the U.S. just put reunion. Yeah. And you were saying that the uh, the mast, the mast from the ship the is mast, now down yeah. in... Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Have you ever been down there? Or oh, yeah. Have you been yeah. to Fredericksburg, Texas for the... Right, yeah. yeah. See, here we are right here. Yeah. The group is right there. There's the fellas. So you were here at this time, were you? Right, oh. yes. I was in there. I don't think that's me. It could be me. You could tell they all wore the same caps. But uh, I was there. Now, this is, this is the captain right here. Let's see now. Yeah, he was the captain at that time. He died, I heard. He was a nice guy, though. Pretty good, yeah. yeah. He was pretty good. Yeah. So the destroyer also fired torpedoes, right? Right, we had ten. Ten torpedoes, yeah. Yeah, we fired them. And five five-inch guns. When we'd go into action, I'd go into the five-inch gun and handle the five-inch gun. And then after we'd fire out a lot of shells, you take the power the uh, the powder can and throw them out on the deck. And then after after the war, after it's calmed down a little bit, we'd go out there and put holes in the the powder can, five-inch powder can, and throw them over the side, and they'd sink. You know, 
because the whole deck was loaded with with those from five five inch guns going off. Must be a lot of scrap metal on the bottom of the Pacific, I suppose. Yeah, I bet there or something. was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, as far as the Beaver Squadron, I don't know why they they what they call it. Yeah. I got one cap at home. It's got this on it. Oh yeah. Now this this picture of this picture of this beautiful young lady uh, was that taken in Chicago? No, that was taken in Oakland, California. In Oakland, California. Yeah. And then this handsome man. This picture was taken. Uh, that was taken in uh, New York. In New York. Yeah. Was this at the end of your? Uh, time? I would I would say that was uh, after the war ended. Yeah. But did you have this picture with you when you were in the, in the in no. on the board the foot? Oh no, 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 no. No. Yeah. no. When I came home, when she had this taken somewhere, you know. And yeah. Opened. I interviewed one uh, one vet, and he had a picture of his wife, and then, well, the, the the picture would disappear. <laughs> the, the oh, his wife would disappear, you know. I guess she was pretty or something, you know. He used to tell oh. a story about that, yeah. Oh, yeah, somebody that yeah. hanging in their locker yeah. or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. What high school did your wife go to, may I ask? Uh, it was down in the city, right? right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. can't think of it now. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, if, if, um, be great to to interview Mrs. Barsky, and uh, yes. is that her? Is that that's that's her hair? Is she Martha? Right, they are Martha's her name, right? Oh, but they call her Marty. Yeah, yeah. And there was this is in Oakland, California, and this is when the war was over, and I was just standing here with this. This fellow died just lately. Yeah, or, so sad. Yeah. That's that's this fella here, right here. See, nice guy. <laughs> Weary. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. The nickname. He was from Ohio, and he was a farmer before the war, and it says he was a farmer after the yeah. war. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And mine, they just they just put down tool maker, and I was a tool and die maker. It was a good. Uh, yeah. So your outfit was uh, was integrated. You had African Americans serving with you. Mr. Bass was from uh, Kentucky. Oh yeah. Who went for, for yeah, the TVA? Yeah, the booklet at home. Yeah. This guy's but nickname was fact, Rebel. Huh? Four books like that, thick of all yeah. this different stuff, you know. Did you have a nickname? And, uh, uh, I really don't yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. No. That um, at that discussion here after Okinawa, the one Navy guy up here, oh. Mr. Lewin, his nickname was Commando. <laughs> Commando. That oh. was his nickname. Yeah. Uh, I went to one of these. I don't know what day it was or anything. Is there a man named Marty that takes care of? Something? Yeah, Mr. Friedman across the street. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, Marty Friedman. I went to that, it was on the second floor or somewhere. Yeah, like on a third Thursday of the month. Some guy, some man stood up and talked, and I should have talked, tried to talk to him, because he might have been on my ship for all I know, oh the my way goodness. he talked. Yeah. And it just bothered me. I should have uh, got together with him at the end of the uh, meeting, you know. Yeah. I may run into him again sometime. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So maybe my final question is: Did you um, so did you join any of the? Well, of course you had the you you were a member of the the foot. Oh the yeah. U.S. foot, the little Beaver reunion. Did you join any of the like the VFW or the? I belong to the VFW. Yeah. In fact, every Friday night I get together with about eighteen or twenty people. And we go to dinner. We go to different restaurants, and they've set up tables. We all sit together on a long table, you know, like just yeah. two, two, two of them. We all eat together. Then we go to the uh, upstairs, and we play dice, some kind of a dice game. So you spend a dollar and a half. <laughs> <laughs>
and then you win a couple of bucks. It's something to do. Get together with people. It's interesting. Yeah. You know? So is that a particular VFW post or? Uh... Yeah, it's uh, 154. Could that be up on Dempster? Is that the Martin Grove? Yeah. 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 Mr. Mott is in that, Charlie. Is that the one he's in? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He plays dice with us and sits and has dinner with us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he doesn't. Um... And uh, well, I've been playing golf all these years. I haven't been playing this year yet. I don't know what happened with the rain or the heat or what. Yeah. We just didn't. Yes. You know, all we do, it seems we spend time running to doctors. I don't know. At our age, you know, it's you go to doctors instead of being on the golf course. And bowl. I bowl too, but I haven't been bowling lately. But I've been feeling okay, but it just seems like... Uh, Every two weeks, I go in and they take some blood out of your finger, you know. And then uh, two weeks later, I go see the doc and he checks me over. All he does is, and that's it. He's sure okay. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you but, look you look terrific. Oh, thank you. And if you, it's my time, it's you know what you yeah. can do. Yeah. So, but it's uh, interesting to come in and talk to you about this. Well, that's thank you for for uh, for sharing uh, the details of. Uh, your life in the service and life afterwards, and uh, and uh, so I think this will be. I think you'll be our fiftieth interview for the. Oh yeah, fiftieth. Fifty, I think oh, so. Oh, that's yeah. pretty good. And across the country, there's sixty. I think there's over sixty-five thousand that have been taken now. Oh. So it's a great. It's a great project, and so yeah. anybody wants to go back and understand your generation and how and what they did, uh, this is a way to Some do it. people are interested. Some. People oh, yeah. are interested in it. I, oh, yeah. Because you talk to some young people, they don't even know. They, they say, well, were you in the war or something? And I tell them, yeah, for World War One. I. <laughs> I kid them, you know. Yeah. They don't, they never heard of Okinawa. No. No. And, uh, it's, um, but I, I think the pendulum's going to come back. I think they're going to be more interested oh, in yeah. those things. Well, now it's just. Iraq and all these other war, little wars going on, but that's terrible. All this, because World War Two was a war. You know, what they hit Pearl Harbor, and it was a war. I would say, with the other well, little kids running around now, and uh, our men are sh looking for the enemy, and with little kids running down the street, that's to me that doesn't seem like a war. Yeah, it's difficult. The world has changed. But, uh, but anyway, I'll, I thank you, Mr. Sparsky, oh, and I'll, I'll turn off the tape sure. recorder, and then thank we'll get you. this typed up, and we'll show it to you. All right. And then if we're on the right course, we'll complete it, and then we'll talk to Mrs. Mrs. Right. Mrs. Okay. Martha Sparsky. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for taking care of me. Yeah.